Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello, everyone. It's Saturday morning. Go. Saturday morning. Oh, guys, what are we going to do? I'm just crashing in on some of the conversations here. Welcome if you're listening on a podcast. Welcome if you're watching on YouTube. Um, sad about the bird seed, Julie. What was that cross chat? Has someone dropped all their bird seed down their front? Mm. So good morning, Jogging Jelly. I love that name, Jogging Jelly. When you jog, do you feel like jelly? I go like, do you, does anyone else remember that thing? when you, back? I don't know if this was a thing in the 70s. It probably was only because we used to play out in the 70s where you'd play out beyond a certain time and it'd start to get dusk, it'd start to get dark. And then from playing and having literally so much naughty fun with all your friends, your body would go weak. You'd go floppy. Would you ever get, it must have been looking back, it must have just been the exhaustion of play. But I just you just go like, you know those toys that you get which, uh, what's this? Uh, magnesium glycine. So do you remember the toys that you'd have like a, a, you'd have a deer standing, sort of like a toy deer, and then you'd press the bottom and you'd collapse. It was fascinating, wasn't it? You'd, you'd press it and you'd collapse. Yeah, you get floppy. Um, Sarah D, I've literally redesigned your living room from the live the other day. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Morning, Mark and all. It was my birthday this week. Can I have a birthday shout out? Elaine Ginolfi, of course you can have a birthday shout out. Happy birthday, sweetie. Happy birthday. Um, And uh, hang on one second. Oh, I've just, just seen. Oh, look at this. And a happy, happy seventh birthday to Adri. <gasps> Tottenham, 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 everyone can stop them. They're never going to do it again like last year. Tottenham, Tottenham, everyone can stop them. They never win a fucking thing each year. Happy birthday. Um, Reese Roberts, morning, Mark. The steady rising heat has got me up early. Make You make it sound like a movie. Happy birthday, Shannon. It's all kicking off here today, isn't it? Shonster Migmon singing happy birthday. Faith Goodman, good morning. Ellery Jones, Steph Schultz, Cloda. Hello, one and all, Amy One. Anyway, it's the Saturday papers. And obviously on a on a Saturday, what do we do? We do the papers. Uh, Ellery Jones, you and Nanny Dye and Green Figured Hell, bloody hilarious. But I'm telling you what, if you haven't seen Green Figured Hell, it's a it's it's like a scene from Journey to the Center of the Earth in that garden. I mean, admittedly, Nan moves slowly. Uh, but it's there's all sorts going out there. Tornadoes, hurricanes, fucking pterodactyls, you name it, it's kicking off. Oh, look, I'll just quickly show you my uh, Father's Day card. I'll be right here. <laughs> Nothing like a tailored, tailored Father's Day card. OK, let's have a look at the front pages, shall we? We do the front pages. Obviously, there's serious news and we talk about that. Morning, Zoe. Um, I hope you're well, too, darling. Grace and Martin. Hello. Um, and then we try to sort of I try to find sort of weird shit. I try to find the sort of stuff in the papers that you go, oh, that's interesting. Or oh, didn't know that. Or you go, mm, look at that. And I must say and all that kind of stuff. But let's have a look at what's on the front pages. So on the front of the Times, we've got pay blow for millions of public sector workers. Um, a fact, uh, a, a worry, but but at the bottom there is Mr. Body Coach himself, Joe Wicks at Glasters, giving it some. There's me texting him and him, him not answering me, and I'm thinking, what's going on here? Why are you, why are you answering me, Joey? You're a lean little winner. I'm a lean little winner. Um, Joe Wicks at Glasters doing a great big body pump work. Apparently, it was quite a. I hear on the grapevine. <laughs> What grapevine, BBC News. Um, it was a bit boring yesterday, uh, I, I was all told, or, apart from the Arctic monkeys. Imagine paying and going to Glastonbury and it being a bit boring. Doctors, five-day strike medics, ramp up action, longest walkout in NH a NHS history. Uh, more problems for the Tories. Mortgage crisis hunt eases pain. Not really. Just makes it a little bit longer for people to have their homes repossessed. Uh, UK hit by Ozempic shortages for weight loss drug, obviously. Uh, we have a real need for it because we have one of the worst diets in the developed world. And also on that point, there was a story on Friday. We have the shortest kids in the world, apparently. Another sign of our terrible, terrible diet. Uh, 
In, we're going to talk about this a little bit more. Invasion of the Killer Hornets, the Daily Star bucking the trend, giving us it, you know, right between the eyes, because there's really not enough to worry about in the world at the moment. <laughs> so we've now got Invasion of the Killer Hornets, which is a problem. Um, and The Guardian reporting on tsunami of dangerous vapes flooding into the UK. Um, I genuinely believe that we are drifting into a vapastrophe. Uh, yeah, I made that word up. You can use it if you want it. Um, toxic men destroying my Katie. This is the front page of the Sun uh, with uh, Katie Katie Price's mum talking about how men have just used her, abused her, and left her suicidal. Um, and you know, I haven't dug into that story too much, but I think it's fair to say. There are always two sides to every equation. Yes, there's the toxicity of those around and the exploitation. And then there's also the unhealthy choices that are being made. Happy birthday, Adri. Look, everyone's saying happy birthday. Tori, I've done it. I've shown not only done a shout out, I've shown a photo. <laughs> um, so happy birthday to Adri. Seven. Seven. Seven, such a seismic age. When I was seven, Han Solo was in the universe. It was exciting. It was exciting times. I don't like the terminology toxic, says Helen Fatherly. One person's toxic is another person's sweet. I don't know. I'm sort of saying any old shit now. OK, so th those are the front pages. And obviously on the front, uh, you know, on the front of the Daily Mail, Boris Johnson really giving it some with his new column. Uh, he's sort of talking about how sneering lefties aren't recognising uh, the merit of the uh, the poor victims or you know, crew of the sub. Obviously, there's a lot of coverage over the uh, Titanic submarine that imploded. Um, lots of lots of articles and pieces online. It's interesting, isn't it? There's a sort of grisly fascination with what actually happened, and I think the grisly fascination one just names it. People want to know how did they, how did it manifest, um, and it is grisly for sure. And and are is it wrong that there's a grisly fascination? I think everyone is curious whenever anyone dies to find out why they die. And I don't necessarily think it's always born of a prurience. Y yes, if you go looking and all that kind of stuff. But if you're thinking and wondering, I think it's more about uh, we're all we're all mortal and we're all going to die in some way. But, um, you know, I think so. I think there's a sort of, oh, how did this happen? Um and of course, it won't have been, a, you know, it will have been pretty, it will have been spectacularly swift. But one of the stories here, there's a quote from the guy whose company it was that, you know, sent the sub down. Um, and he said in a sort of slightly sort of um, indignant fashion to someone who was querying the safety, he said it's safer than crossing the street. Um, but, uh, you know, there's all sorts of stories coming out like Ross Kemp. Uh, and someone else decided not to go down in it because I think Ross Kemp's, uh, you know, the health and safety team on his TV show said, mm, it's not that, it's not that safe. Uh, there's, there were fears about the material that the hull was made from, old scaffolding poles made for ballast. Um, you know, I have to say, there's there's the exciting end of adventure and there's the kind of, you know, there's the, you know, what's it called? Daring do and the kind of, oh, let's go far, let's do this, let's do, you know, and all this kind of malarkey. Um, it, it was a submersive, absolutely not a submarine. A submarine can be powered and can and has control of its destiny. A submersible, isn't it? A submersible rather than submersive. Um, and but there are also a lot of people who are just a little bit too, you know, far. You know, they're a bit sort of rough. They're a bit irresponsible. They don't mind things being a bit, you know, playing fast and loose with the rules because for them that's part of the hit. And I do do think that an enormous number of these kind of uh, thrill seekers, if you like. Um, thrill seekers are addicts and there is the addiction gene in there for sure. So obviously, um, the, the sort of the post-mortem, if you like, of hows, whys, wherefores and all the rest of it are going through. And yet again, I still, my heart goes out to the son who went down simply for Father's Day. Um, I think that's just really sad. Um, as the Daily Star was saying, creating a buzz, invasion of Asian hornets. Now, in today's Curly Cooks, me and Dina have a little exchange about the invasion of the killer hornets. And by all accounts, you're supposed to contact the local authorities, aren't you? But who do you contact? Do you contact the police? Do you contact your local MB? <laughs> who do you contact? I or Do you make a citizen's arrest? Um, invasion of Asian hornets threat with a rise in nests. Britain is braced for a record-breaking invasion of Asian hornets. Well, these are the downsides of 
global warming. On the one hand, people in Surrey and the Cotswolds go, oh, there's nothing nicer than a British-grown cabinet. And then meanwhile, at the same time as the British-grown cabinet means that everyone in the Cotswolds is having wonderful, brilliant British English wine, uh, a bunch of Asian hornets come in and sting the fuck out of your face. <laughs> That'll learn you. Uh, that's this, this is the content. You know, we can't be surprised at this, you know. Every year we have killer hornets, but we got more this year than last year. And it's going up. It's going up. I quite like this. Uh, I like that font that the uh, the son of used there. It's very much like Invasion of the 12... I've got it up there, haven't I? Invasion of the 12 foot, twelve million foot women or something. Huge rise in nests. Um, so we've got the vicious bugs have established their headquarters in Jersey. So Asian Hornet HQ is in Jersey. I don't necessarily know if the old executioner is going to be up to the up to the job. I got stung by a hornet the first time I ever went to um, Ibiza, and I, I went for my pint, and it was on my pint. It was a beer. It was a beer beer hornet, and uh, wow, my thought it came up like that. I look, it, 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 I look like Chris Pine as Captain Kirk in the remake or the reboot of Star Trek. Okay, so yeah, so hornets, be careful, guys. Be careful. Reasons to be beerful. One, two, three. Brits back in love with ale. 21 million extra pints down this year. This is a curious story. Now, <laughs> I do find this really strange. To get the economy moving, guys, get drunk, become an addict, become an alcoholic, do extreme damage to yourself because actually it keeps the economy going. What? What kind of a perverse world are we in? Um, cheers. Beer lovers have come to the rescue of the ailing hospitality business by heroically. I mean, Listen to that. Heroically downing an extra 21 million pints in three months. If that doesn't say well done country on binge drinking, I don't know what. Obviously, there are businesses that we don't want to go bust. But isn't it curious that we are in a situation where we have to promote drinking more and more? So Brits have heroically downed an extra 21 million pints. You would never sort of say... Brits have heroically shoveled 60,000 tonnes of marching powder, powder up your left nostril, would you? Uh, punters in pubs and bars glugged a total of 1.6 billion pints, making it the booziest start to the year since the pandemic. Brilliant. So we're going to have more problems. So how much does how much does alcohol cost the NHS in a year? Is it 36 billion? I'm not. I'm not I, love, I love people having a beer. I loved having a beer. Just curious language, isn't it? Curious language. Um, this story is a sad one, but I, I want to know what you think about this. Over 200 ex-rugby players in brain injuries court case. This sort of this sort of sits alongside the idea that, you know, back in the 70s, a football in the seven, a 70s football was nothing like the footballs of today. So, of course, footballers who headed a lot, you know, strikers or defenders. Um, well, I mean, in all parts of the football pitch, but, you know, especially defenders who are getting those big balls that come in. Um you know, brain damage, brain damage, uh, you know, forms of dementia, you know, it, impact caused sort of dementia. But this is the story of over 200 former rugby players with brain injuries um, beginning a high court case against three sports governing bodies. And it's a curious one, isn't it? How I, I, I'm not entirely sure how you can win. I mean, I never liked rugby because it just struck me as crazy that you're running at really large people. I mean, the one time I was, for, well, I was forced to play a couple of times, I would always play as a winger, which is the one that runs down the edge. It's fast and you run. And the reason I was quite good as a winger was I was shit scared of the ginormous boys that were the size of refrigerators heading towards me. But it didn't, so it wouldn't surprise me that if you go for a sport like rugby, you're going to get injured and that these are the injuries. I don't, I suppose what I'm, the reason I pulled the story was I'm not entirely sure. You Can you really blame someone else for that? Can you take to the high court? Should there be more warnings, I suppose? But if they weren't thought of, again, it was a different time, wasn't it? And they do wear headgear now. I mean, I've never understood boxing. It's like we all get outraged when someone's really badly injured in boxing. And then it's like, well, you're punching someone in the head. Of course you're going to get injured. That doesn't mean that we don't have an enormous amount of compassion. I mean, I suppose it's, it's you know, it's a bit like, is it a bit like the whole um, asbestos thing? 
you know how so many people working with asbestos in houses with asbestos, you know, that when they discovered that it was bad for you. Anyway, uh, it, it was just, you know, I just think, God, yeah, you know how things changed. Uh, Ross Souch, you always played as a hooker, did you? And in rugby, what did you, what position did you play? Um, it was my left arm. Drew Osler, you were stung by a hornet. Wow. I've always wondered about those with cauliflower. It's funny, Helen Fatherly, isn't it? Cauliflower ears. Yeah, it's funny. When you meet blo when blokes meet blokes, one of the first sort of uh, things that you do, especially when you come from a comprehensive, common background like mine is, if you meet someone and they seem quite sort of, hi, how's it going? But they've got no ears. You go, rugby. He's had his ears torn off. I mean, in the scrum, they tear at your ear. Ugh, rugby frightened me too much. Too much. So that's the story of uh, over 200 ex-rugby players uh, in brain injuries court case. Uh, heart monitors on shopping trolleys could identify people at risk of stroke. This is astonishing. And I'll tell you why it's astonishing. Sh supermarket trolleys might be famed for their wonky wheels, but researchers say the carts could be used to save lives uh, by taking, by, by analysing your heart rhythm. Now, the technology behind this is not entirely dissimilar. Oh, wow. Look at that. My dad lost his kneecap as a winger in the Navy. Good trip. Oh, he probably means brutal. It's brutal. In the name of sport. Sorry, I don't know why I got so high pitched there. Um, yeah, sorry. So heart monitors, this is not entirely dissimilar. When you're on a running machine in a gym, so and, and I've done 12 kilometers per hour for like a minute, and I, you know, and I I can't I can't go any I can't go any faster than that at the moment. And then you put your hands on those sort of they're sort of like pulse receptor type things, don't they? And it reads your heart rate. Uh, this is shopping trolleys will be able to tell you if you're at risk of a stroke. A couple of thoughts with this though. A brilliant, a fantastic tech. But B, um, the last time me and I was in a, in a supermarket trying to use a shopping trolley, it didn't work at all. It wouldn't move. It kept veering to the right. It kept sticking. It kept stopping. In fact, there were about me and three other women trying to get trolleys out. We just couldn't. And it, it turned into a frenzy. And if anyone was going to have a stroke, we all were trying to just operate the thing. How are you going to know that your stress levels and your potential risk of stroke isn't attached to how malfunctioning your uh, trolley is? You know, I think the trolley is almost a cause of this. But that said, and also imagine just going to buy some, you know, you're just trying to get half a dozen eggs. And um, and then suddenly the heart monitor goes weird. Weird, Faith Goodman, your wheels go wonky. Your heart goes, you could come out of shopping really stressed. I don't go to the supermarket for a health assessment. I go to actually find a bit of mindfulness. Uh, Holly D, they're not accurate in my gym. It's always about 30 BPMs higher than my watch says on the machines. I don't know if any kit is accurate ever. That's my thought. It's like, who decides what the level of, of audio is on, on music? Do you know what I mean? It's like, who decides what 10 is? <laughs> I know someone does. I know there's a decibel limit somewhere. Um, so, yeah, kind of a good idea. But how would you how would you feel if you went to you, you've gone down the shop? You've got to get a, a you've got to get a Kings Mill 50 50 medium. 50-50 because, and why do we get Kings Mill 50-50? Let's be honest about it. Because to get white is unforgivable and you will do the walk of shame as you walk in. Whereas 50-50 is a gesture towards some kind of acknowledgement of health. Medium doesn't look too self-indulgent like you really want to eat a sandwich that's more like rolling up in a duvet. Um, and so you've gone to get that and then the fucking trolley tells you you're about to have a stroke. Tori, Italian supermarkets really stress me out. I mean, maybe they need machines to tell you if you can have a heart attack. That's what they need to give you. Anyway. Oh, marking rallies, tens of thousands. This is, a, you know, due to all of the strikes and everything, spare a thought, actually. There are tens and tens of thousands of students who aren't going to get their final results, and they're going to have to go to graduation not knowing if they've passed or not. Sorry. In fact, I think even Fleur hasn't had her graduation ceremony for her degree because of, of lockdown and everything like that so many kids sold a pup magic mike has everyone been, anyone ever been to see magic mike anyone a fan of male strippers because magic mike the show now has to deal with as that headline briefly showed you there uh on a weekly basis sometimes two or three women are escorted from a magic mike event for biting scratching attaching themselves to the dancers, dragging them across the stage. I mean, 
it's like a bear pit. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'd, I'd just love that to happen in any way. No, I'm joking. But I mean, imagine that. I'd cringe in person, Steph Schultz. That's the thing. I mean, I'm lucky. I've never, ever been into that kind of, you know, game of strip joints. You know, lots of men and women and couples do it. I, I don't understand it. I mean, the full Monty didn't do it for me. I know it was a bit of fun, but uh, Emma Walsh, I love the film, but I think that has more to do with Channing Tatum. Yeah, you see, I think a lot of people realise that, yeah, they want to see Channing Tatum strip off. I mean, even I enjoyed it in some film that he did. But do you want to go down, the, you know, Leicester Square, you see women turfed out of uh, Magic Mike. On a regular basis. It's that classic. It's like in a Western, you know, when the bar saloon doors go like that and someone's hurled out and they land against the View Cinema, which is the entrance opposite the Magic Mike in Leicester Square. Um, yeah, anyway, so poor old uh, poor old um, Magic Mike. Complaints after biting by audience. Jude Osler, I wonder how much of the Lee Francis tour has been sold out. It's a curious question. Are you going? Are you a fan? This is a curious one. How Harry, Prince, obviously Harry and Meghan have lost their Spotify account. But I tell you what, this is a podcast. If they'd got this idea off the ground <laughs> and the if, the if is enormous, because let's face it right now, Putin is in trouble. Or is he? Is Putin in trouble? We're, we're possibly on the curb, on the curb, on the cusp of civil war in Russia. As we know, you back a bully into a corner. It's not what he does to the person actually attacking him. It's what he does to everyone else. Uh, so I think we all need to just it's a squeaky bum moment here as Putin comes under pressure. But um, Prince Harry had this cracking idea, which is a great idea on paper. He, said he pitched the idea of wanting to interview the likes of Putin, Trump, uh, Zuckerberg, and, and, and chat with them about childhood trauma. Imagine Putin. I mean, if he got that, if if he got an interview, I mean, it's the kind of thing Putin might do as a megalomaniac. Imagine getting an interview with Putin where Putin talked about how mum... You know, mum didn't sort of pay him any attention and how he, he you know, he just, he, the, the way in which he had to look after the dog and, you know, and we got to know, we got to know what made Putin the despot that he is. That is a listenable podcast, but you've got one or two episodes, haven't you? I mean, where do you go after Putin? You'd have to interview God, wouldn't you? You'd have to interview God. Great idea, but utterly impractical. Utterly impractical. I mean, I'd listen, but it ain't going to happen. Uh but maybe the cage fight between Zuckerberg and um, Trump is. So that's how Prince Harry pitched an interview with Putin for podcasts without access to Putin. It's easy to pitch an idea, but you've got to have access to the poor, to the person. Now, we were talking last week. This is all about Elvis, the underage, what? The underage sex predator. This is un uncomfortable reading this. This is the centre spread, centre spread of the Daily Mail. Got a bit of war. Mummy was a bore. Mummy left me on my own. I played in my nappy. I still wear my nappy. I love a comfortable nappy. Diapers. Gotta wear a diaper. You know, Trump, Trump would be, uh, you know, I could never build a wall. That's why I want a wall. Um, yeah, no, sorry. This is so. This is uh, this is Elvis. Unfortunately, this is the, about the series coming to Amazon Prime that uh, me and Nads were talking about on Coffee Moaning this week. Um, you know, talking about you know that famous line that we said: fourteen will get you twenty. The idea of having a relationship with fourteen-year-olds will get you twenty years in prison. We've talked a lot about different times, different eras, different you know all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, of course, it's that weird thing when you then look at photographs of him, suddenly there's a more malevolent feel to them all, isn't there? You suddenly go, oh, my God. Now, interestingly, I thought this new film, Priscilla, directed by uh, Sofia Coppola, uh, was going to be a sort of critique of this. If you look at the trailer or the teaser that we reacted to on the channel, it felt like it was kind of going dark, disturbed, but it's based on her book. And she says she's really excited and pleased about the film. So I don't think it is going to be that. The bigly wall is a big, 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 bigly wall. Um, so... Yeah, so it's gaining traction. I think we're going to watch the Amazon Prime. Um, I think it's important to watch it. And I think it's interesting, uh, as we said before in the week, that, you know, as soon as the Daily Mail sort of seizes upon it, then it's like, God, we have to listen, don't we? Because it's the bloody Daily Mail. Um, but yeah, it's not going away. And um, yeah, interesting. Interesting to know what people... It's really hard when you like someone and you're challenged like this to see whether you can adjust. It's like me with... The only thing I think of recently, which was a bit like that, is like Ezra Miller. The Flash, he's sensational in it. Sorry, they are non-binary. They're sensational in it. 
but when but it's it's absolutely tanked to the box office because the vast majority of people can't shake the stories off camera that have happened. If you don't know the the Ezra Miller story, it's to do with the new he's the actor in the new superhero film, um, The Flash. So this is this is uh, this is all about Elvis. Elton John, the sun won't go down on me. Um, it feels like he's been doing his last ever gig for so long, but I have such a huge soft spot for Elton John. What's your fa- favorite Elton John song, guys? You must have one. I'm still standing after all this time, feeling like a true survivor, feeling like a glass of wine. Uh, my big respect for this guy goes out to him for the fact that he is sober. Admittedly, he's helped lots of other really sort of famous sober people. Yes, I would have loved him to have been my sponsor and all that kind of stuff. But he's been sober. He's 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 just been there. He's an institution. I think he was a bit misguided saying that everyone who's had a problem with the Philip Schofield story is homophobic, because I just don't think that's true. But this is the story that this is potentially, or is suggested that it's going to be his last, like, exactly, Emma Walsh. Love him or not, he's an astonishing performer. I find him, he's an incredibly shy man. And I love him in interview. And I don't know, Tiny Dancer, that's another great one. And I don't know if you ever see him on um, ooh, Graham Norton. He's so droll. And he was brilliant in The Kingsman, too. Brilliant. I, I love him. I absolutely love him. And I love a lot of his songs. And I love that one. What's that one that I always break into song about? The Kiki B one. What's the Kiki B one? Tell me it. Tell me. It. Don't go breaking my heart. I could if I tried. Nobody knows it. Nobody knows. Because when I was now. See, you know what I mean? He just make he brings the best out of you. But anyway, this is going to be his last gig. That's it. It's over. Oh, I don't know. Don't go breaking my heart. Kiki D. No, don't go breaking my heart. Anyway, there you go. His voice wasn't the best a few years ago, a bit grunty, but more recently he sounded loads better, says Jane Hurst. Uh, and I've loads of good reviews from people who've seen him on his tour. We saw him very briefly, me and Maddie. He performed a couple of tracks with Ed Sheeran. Surprise visit. It was astonishing. He is he's a he's a great, he's a great showman. He's a great showman. Um veganism trend is going stale as diners vote with knives and forks. This isn't good news for Dina Dudu. Well, actually, this is probably very good news for Dina. Because this is all about those companies, massive organizations, huge sort of, you know, you know, big, big companies. Um, by the way, Putin has declared treason in Russia. Oh, Christ, what the hell's going to happen over there? This is the idea that the plant based revolution has come unstuck as lots of a few companies are going bust. Uh, the, the cost of a lot of these things has gone through the roof, which I think is why what Dina does is so amazing, because she she's she's a real world vegan. She's not a wanky vegan. I'm not so sorry. I'm not suggesting all, all veganers are wanky. But there is this kind of there's a PR problem for veganism, which is not a million miles away from the Cotswoldites drinking English wine due to global warming. Um, but yeah, so this is a this is a piece just looking at the fact that the plant based, as I say, revolution is 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 the wheels are coming off it a bit as the cost of it all is a bit too expensive. Um, so we need real, authentic vegan food. And I'll tell you what the best vegan food is. Buy a fucking cucumber and chew on it. That's what I say. Just chew. Just eat veg. I can't. I can't. I like chlorinated chicken. It's terrible. I don't know how to get off it. It's awful. Um, food related story here. Um, online food shop lottery. I think online food delivery is a fucking con. What a joke. Um, supermarkets deliver fresh produce. Uh, near or beyond use by dates. Now, use by dates are something that need to be played fast and loose with anyway, because it's it's the cause of so much waste in in the world. But when you're ordering food and you're paying a premium and then you get delivered something that's a day late, I think uh, the worst was Sainsbury's 10.8 days past use by date for Frankfurters. Asda, 2.8 days past use by date for Stilton. Does that really matter? Doesn't cheese just keep maturing and getting better, a bit like men? Um, 
Asda bacon 6.2 days before use by date. So the, the problem here is that a lot of food that's been delivered is some of it is, is, is landing after the use by date. Whereas a lot of other food is landing quite so close to a use by date that you pop it in the fridge, you maybe forget that it's arrived, and then you go looking for that snack at sort of 3 a.m. in the morning and you discover it's out of date. Dangerous. To, is it dangerous to eat? Do you know what I mean? So be careful. Check it, Edward Bevington. There are apps that allow you to go to places and get cheap food, half price at the end of the day. Are there, Edward Bevington? Let's share share the name of an app, not a link because we can't share links, but share, share the name. Oh, fantastic. If it's not walking off on its own, I'll eat it. If it's not walking off on its own, I'll eat So does that mean you eat anything that's walking off as well? No, I'm trying to with that. Magic, magic mushroom dinners. Look at this. Magic mushroom dinner party couples risk prison. This is the increasing trend for middle classes. So, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy, pass us that wonderful crisp Chardonnay from Sussex and pass us some micro dosage of the old mushrooms we got from the garden. Because you're beginning to look like a giant otter. This is the idea that middle class parties are eating loads of magic mushrooms. People are microdosing, microdosing like mad. Anyway, a judge here says, be careful. It's illegal, like heroin is illegal. You will go to prison. Um, the psychedelics are in the same category as heroin. Be careful. Sarah D, Harry loves a magic mushroom, doesn't he? And thank you for pointing out, everyone, that those really annoying fun guys at the uh, Glastonbury Festival yesterday with the uh, mushroom hats on were the fun guys, fungies. Fun guys. Doesn't make them any more fun, I'm afraid. I like a mushroom. Me. I love a mushroom soup. In fact, I love mushrooms. Um, the only time I had mushrooms, or, well, it's not the only time I'm like, <laughs> who am I trying to kid? One of the times I had mushrooms at university, I got head butted uh, at a kebab shop afterwards. Uh, with a tall, huge American footballing friend of mine called Alex. We were standing outside a kebab shop. This local guy came over, said hello. I thought he was a teddy bear. So I went in to hug him. He headbutted me and I flew through the kebab shop window. It's not a pleasant experience of mushrooms, that isn't. Um, so, yeah, let's move on. Moving on. They're back, but Furbies now help children meditate. Do you remember Furbies? Now, this, this new, the Furbies, those funny little things with big eyes that just sit in a corner and go... And then wave their arms. The worry here is, though, with so many kids that aren't kids at school, but cats, with so many cats and dogs and dinosaurs and wolves at school, some kids are going to start to identify as fucking Furbies, actual toys, Furbies. Anyway, this creature, they're, they're, they're now being brought back with meditation functions. Oh, my God, this is like Megan, the horror movie, but with a Furby that theoretically is going to calm your kids. There's got to be a, a black mirror in this. This is like Chucky Child's Play, but with a meditating Furby that gets into your psyche. And you say, oh, actually, let's make a note. It's not a bad idea, is it, for a film? Just, just one second. What do you think, Reese? Uh, the updated version comes with a microphone and five voice commands that can make it dance, tell the child's fortune, copy their voice, put on a light show, Lighter joint. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah, this is Furbies. They're going to help children meditate. Aero B and B. I love this. Look at this chap. He's taking the front of a fucking airplane, and he's turned it into an Airbnb. University lecturer Stephen Northam bought the front half of a 1960s Boeing 737 for five grand. Um, he then spent 15 grand updating it, and now you can stay in it. It's the ultimate type of glamping. And late at night, late at night, he apparently what you pay for is when you when you stay in it late at night, around about 11 o'clock, he comes outside and shakes it incessantly to give you the authentic turbulence. Yeah, he does. I, yeah. No, talking toys, Reese, really unnerving. They've got new sex toys that talk. Have you heard about that? Yeah, they literally talk to you whilst doing whatever they do. Um, so, yeah. Would you like to stay? Would, would you like to stay in the cockpit, sir? We can give you turbulence at 11, 11 p.m. There's a helicopter you can stay in, too. You're absolutely right. Um, what else have we got? That's air. Let's have a look inside. Look, there he is in the cockpit. There's a little bedroom. Just belt up. Mum causes flight misery. Um, police had to storm a holiday jet after a mum reportedly refused to put a belt on her child. The woman first caused disruption before takeoff from Greek island Kos. 
She declined to buckle up her scared child, and the 1.25 p.m. flight was delayed by six hours. What a fucking annoying woman. That's all I'd say. How fucking annoying. Belt up your kid and belt up. <laughs> Elizabeth Gordon, he doesn't really do the turbulence. No, that, that's chucking that one in for free. But I would. I'd offer that. I'd say a, a time unknown to you, someone will run out and shake the shit out of this place. Imagine not getting your kid to belt up. I mean, I've never understood why they say when you are belted up, can you please remove that newspaper from the floor? So as we're crashing into the ocean, the supplement of the times is going to kill me, is it? Really? 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 Anyway, they're just doing their job. Anyway, do you want to see some sweet photos for those of you listening on podcast? Oh, no, hang on. Oh, no, hang on. This is, this is, oh, yeah, look at this. TikTok bars TV double for looking too similar. So there's Mr. Bean. TikTok's banned someone because they look too like Mr. Bean, which is good. You know, lots of people duplicate accounts and all that kind of stuff. But let's have a look at how like Mr. Bean he looks. It doesn't look anything like him. Final two minutes. All right, it doesn't look anything like him. It doesn't look anything like him. How can you ban that? And finally, there's uh, there's uh, Ryan Reynolds meeting up with the Bake Off team. Oh, poor Hollywood's never been so happy. A little bit of Hollywood next to Hollywood. Uh, look at these otters. Who doesn't like an otter? I love an otter. Otters. Uh, oh. <laughs> and this I just pulled because it just fucking made me smile. Oh, surf's up. Sorry if you're listening. You're going to have to go over to YouTube and just watch the last three minutes. Look at him. What a surfer, dude. And finally, this. A dingo on a beach in Australia. Oh my god. Oh. 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 Look, Dingo's attacking Git off our beach. There you go. Wanted to show you that yesterday. Love otters. I quite like dingoes, but dingoes are cheeky little fuckers, aren't they? Anyway, guys, have a lovely day. As I say, 10 o'clock, 38 minutes. The Curly Cooks is coming to you. It's fun. It's colourful. It's eventful. It's weird. And um, it's just, you know, chaos. Um, have a lovely day, guys. Lots of love. Review of